Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Check Me. Uh, I want to cover the C.J. Gardner Johnson situation and uh, kind of why would or if there was a fallout between him and the Philadelphia Eagles and leaving. Uh, but I want to talk about in larger scope the the dynamic of negotiations and NFL contracts and how they kind of work out and play out. Uh, since most of the contracts aren't guaranteed in the NFL, um, a lot of looming contracts can come uh, can come into place uh, that may not benefit may, mainly may not benefit the player. Uh, different than in, in an NBA where it's guaranteed contract. So let's talk about the C.J. Gardner uh, Johnson situation. So essentially, C.J. Gardner Johnson, C.J. Um, I was gonna say C.J. was in conver conversation with the Philadelphia Eagles as far as signing a new long-term deal. Um, and basically, C.J. wanted to get paid the same as much as safeties, other safeties that got paid in NFL. Um, what he eventually signed, start in, end up signing a one-year deal with the Detroit Lions. Uh, eight million, one year, eight million dollar deal with six point five guaranteed, um, and instead uh, of signing with the Eagles, now uh, the Eagles could have gave him something easy, something comparable to that deal, uh, but he wanted to shop the market. He wanted to get paid as much as some of the other large safeties uh, in the NFL. Now, the question is, is he worth that? Now, if you look at some of the other safeties in the NFL and how they're getting paid, uh, pretty much Jesse Bates was making is annually is making sixteen million a year. Von Bell, 7.5 million. Donovan Wilson, 7 million. Uh, Juan, Juan Thornhill, 7 million. Jimmy Ward, 6.5 million. And Julian Love, 6 million. So essentially, 8 million is kind of around that market. The Eagles offered him a one year, $12 million deal with incentives. Um, I think that was you know the deal that they put in front of him. He essentially turned it down before they heard the larger three year deal. Uh, but essentially, his, his Universal Sports Management, his agency company, pretty much put out a tweet as far as. The reality of a one-year deal versus two versus a, a three-year deal. So um, the one-year deal, which you know, they pretty much said, which sounds better to you? Uh, a one-year deal, eight million dollars, ver uh, eight million dollars uh, uh, versus a three-year deal, twenty-four max with seventeen mil in the third year. Which one are you taking? And ideally, what, what he's basically saying: if you sign a three-year deal in the, NF in the NFL. And most of that money is going to be in the, the last year. There's a good chance you're not going to get it because if you the second the second year you're playing right before you, or the end of the second year, you want to have a contract extension because if you play a second year, now you're on this one year deal where they can trade you, they can get rid of you. Um, if you get injured, uh, they can they can reduce the deal, restructure your contract. So there are a lot of things that can happen in that third year. So a three year deal it's pretty much the same as the audition as a one year deal where you can get a longer contract you know, a longer contract the problem is this they feel that the eagles offered him a three year 24 million dollar deal uh 24 24 million dollar uh, max um and most of his money will be get he'll get in the third year so pretty much a third of his money he'll get in this in this in his third year uh only making 7 million over 2 years which is kind of an insult <laughs> kind of an insult um but uh, the the problem is uh, the Eagles tried to make give him pay him that much, but over time period. So the Eagles couldn't make the deal with him because you know Eagles had to make cash space for this year and essentially next year. Next year, having to pay Smitty. When they did that, they basically said, "Hey, look, we're trying to make room for cash space." And when he turned it down, they pretty much went and said, "Let's pay Slay then." I think it was either get CJ or get Slay. When it comes down to that, of course you're going to get Slay. And Slay agreed to a particular contract deal where you know he can get money pretty much over time instead of this deal right here with um, with CJ. The larger question is this: It's a larger thing we're dealing with. It, you, if you're getting on a three-year deal, it's it's an audition. That first year is an audition because the second year you're talking about you're talking contract negotiations, and these teams are not going to try to pay. These these are these are some of the most successful businesses in the NFL in, in, the, in the world. They're not going to pay you your worth. And they're not gonna, they're going to do what they can not to pay you their worth. And if you give them any type of any type of inkling or indication that um, you know you're not worth it, they're going they're going to hop on that. You know he didn't play a full season. Um, you know uh, they have other other guys ahead of him, so they they kind of put him on the back burner to play him. Now this happens to a lot of guys. A lot of guys you know they get franchise tags. Same things happening with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson you know. He, he's, you know, in a situation where he tried to get a deal done before the season ended. You know, he's on his rookie contract, you know. Um, so the the one year versus the $3 million deal, um, people think, oh, three years, 24 max, that's solid. No, because the contract isn't guaranteed. 
And on that last year, typically what happens to people and what almost happened to Slay, it, when you're going to the season on your second year, you are you are and you have a and you have a large lump sum to be paid out on. Same thing with Aaron Rodgers. They're gonna try they're gonna try to dump you and trade you to create cap space. Unless you're a guy that can that you're top guy on the team, they, they feel you're indispensable and you can't be replaced. You know, they're they're gonna they're gonna find a way to ship you and trade you. Uh, for a guy who's comparable or a young guy or somebody else that can take take your take your place. When they signed Greedy, it was kind of the indication to CJ, hey, look, they're getting rid of you. But um, this is the com- the, co- the conversation. Now, which one would you personally take? Would you take the one year deal and bet on yourself and say, "Hey, look, I I, I can I can get a longer contract with another team, um, but a twenty four a three year twenty four million dollar deal with seventeen million, pretty much a th- almost you know a, a third of your contract in the last year, you know what do you take? So I think this is the one thing that he definitely considered. You know, CJ definitely considered the sports you know his Universal Sports Management his agency was. Definitely not buying it. Um, and the question is, does the NFL give fake deals to people? I think they do. And I think that, you know, whoever his management team, I think they should be happy about it because if I'm personally CJ, I wouldn't take the deal either. Either, You know, um, I get the one-year deal. I take, I take the, I take the uh, you know, uh, the $8 million and then, you know, try to see if I can get a longer contract, you know, work before the season or during the season after that. A lot of times if the guy's playing well in the first couple of games of the season, they try on a one year deal. They try to work, work, you know, to make him, you know, to restructure his contract or extend his contract because they want him for longer. But if, you know, they're sucking it up. Then it is what it is. But you know, he's going to a situation that's loaded with defensive backs. The Detroit Lions are trying to beef up their defense, and you know, they have a good fiery, uh, fiery coach, uh, Dan Campbell. Um, you know, who who's rallying the Detroit Lions to play better. They lost some guys, but I think it'll be opportunity for CJ to to get in there. He's only twenty five years old. You know, to get in there, make a name for himself. But once again, we're battling that. You know, do you take the three-year deal or do you take the one-year deal? And I think you know, if you're if you're willing to bet on yourself and you know you're at a young age, yeah, go for it. You know, uh, but the three-year deal may be appetizing to people who want to retire with that team and then restructure their contract. What happens is, if it's an older guy or a guy that you know they're looking to create space, you grow on the team grows on you. So that 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 third year. Right, they're thinking that you'll restructure your contract because you're in a good spot. You know, in three years he's going to be 28 years old. You know, probably still in his prime. So um, it's a slick move that these companies, these sorry, these companies. I think I'm thinking NFL. It is a company. The NFL does to get the most out of players and not pay their players out. And the players have to take a stand since the contracts aren't guaranteed in the NFL. Players will ship you. In the NBA, they're going to get they're going to get everything they can out of you before they trade you. 